What is going on guys and welcome to the first episode of BAGM for NHL 16. I have the full game. I've had it for three or four days here and initially what I wanted to do is I wanted to get a GM mode out before anybody. I wanted to be the first one to do it on YouTube but what happened was I played it and I was like holy crap. This is so much different than I ever have uh, anticipated. It is, it is a complete completely different game mode. I, I'm blown away at the changes, some positive, some negative, but we're going to get into the GM here. So, uh, like, I, like I said, this is my first time playing on next gen console GM mode. I played a lot on 14, 15 on the 360, but, uh, this is my first time actually playing on the next gen console. So initially I wanted to make my team, the Vancouver Canucks, and I was go, I had kind of a plan on what I want to do with my first GM mode for NHL 16. It was going to be the Canucks. I was like, yeah, you know, we'll do the Canucks, my hometown team. But then I thought no. I thought no because it would it would be too biased. I It's not going to be enjoyable to watch. Uh, I can just tell you guys right now, I don't really have like a specific reason, but I can just tell you it's not going to be enjoyable to watch. The second team I was going to do, I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to do them, so I might as well do Edmonton. And I was like, well, you're going to do Edmonton. Edmonton, you, everyone's going to know how that's going to turn out. You got McDavid is going to be 96 overall, blah, blah, blah. And then people said, don't do Edmonton because, you know, it's going to be one of the biggest teams that, are, that has been done. And I was kind of thinking, what team can I do? Which team do I not have a bias for? And I went over through all of the teams and the team that I chose is not going to be the Minnesota Wild, it is the Montreal Canadiens. There we go. We are going to Eastern Canada. Canada. Uh, I am super, super stoked. Montreal is a team that has some things that uh, are very good. They have some things that need some changing and I cannot wait to do this GM mode. So we're going to go into the rules here. Fantasy draft, obviously going to be off. Uh, all this stuff, auto sign free agents. This determines whether or not the CPU will automatically handle the free agents for the user team. That's going to be me. We're going to keep that off. GM mode length, we're going to go 25 years, although it's going to be probably a 10 year GM mode. I just like to play them afterwards. Uh, difficulty is going to be on Superstar. We're going to crank that one up. Uh, draw all this stuff. I think we're good. We're going to turn injuries off because it was super annoying last year and I much prefer to play with them off. Uh, uh, anything else we got to deal with here? Advanced? Is there any other cool things here? Uh, that's all gameplay stuff. Stuff that we really don't need to we don't need to address. But Montreal, get ready. GMX Tech is coming. Carey Price, PK Subban, Max Patch ready. It's coming, baby. Here we go. I am I am super super excited to get this started. Let's go. So this is definitely going to be a learning curve for me. This whole G it is completely different. It is a whole different game. Forget everything you knew about GM mode boom there it is so some things I really like some things I dislike but I have to get over that we're here with Montreal look at that goaltending category 94 you can switch between the AHL and the NHL by a click of a button which is very very cool on the bottom there you see locker room chemistry player meetings which is kind of cool and you get the next event which is obviously like an all-star game or the trade deadline or the Stanley Cup or anything like that but uh, you can sim to the next preseason game there's a couple things I dislike about that. Um, you can sim right here. The thing I dislike about this calendar screen is that there's no stats. Maybe on like the far right instead of the schedule uh, for your NHL and your AHL team, there could be a stats like to see maybe if a player had a hat trick that night, if they jumped up like three or four goals. That's a big thing that I'm going to miss from previous generation GM mode. Obviously, I'm just going to have to get over that. In our division, we have the Bruins, we have Jack Eichel and the Buffalo Sabres. I added Jack Eichel in into the game so he's on Buffalo as well Austin Matthews is in the draft for next year I didn't add any other players uh, honestly I could have sat there and added players for the next hour to two hours editing players adding players into the draft Matthew Kachuk could have added so many players but I decided just to go with Austin Matthews obviously going to be the number one guy next year hopefully anyways so yeah I added Jack Eichel and Austin Matthews the only two players that I added slash edited in this whole 
whole thing. You got Detroit, you got Florida, which was another team I was very close to, to and choosing, but I chose Montreal. And we got ourselves and obviously the Ottawa Senators. So you got the Canadian team there, you know, you got the, the rivalry going on. Obviously, we're going to be playing against Toronto lots. It is going to be awesome. We're going to have some rivalries. It's going to be very, very fun. So there's player meetings available. You will see this throughout the GM mode. Basically, for example, this is good. If you don't know anything about the morale, uh, you know, just kind of listen up here. But pretty much if, for, ex for example, if you were to trade Daniel Sedin away from Henrik, his morale would go down. His stats would go down. It would not be pretty. So well, players have morale. They have friends on the team. I'm going to see if I can see that here. Attributes, uh, statistics, contract info. So here's his concern. So high locker room chemistry. He's buddies with Devontae smith Pelly, Tori Mitchell, and Nathan Beaulieu. If any of those players were to be traded slash sent down to St. John's, Max Pacioretty, I don't know if his stats would totally go down if he would diminish his play, but he would be upset. He His morale would not be up. His current morale is happy, so we're going to try to keep it that way and Dale Weiss. This is something that's very, very cool. The best locker room chemistry is Weiss. Alexi Emelin, Tom Gilbert for him, Alex Galchenyuk, Thomas Buchanan, Carey Price. These guys obviously are good to have in the room. It looks like we have a lot of, we have actually have a quite a bit of mix here. It looks like Nathan Bill Yu is a pretty, uh, a pretty popular guy. Alexi Emelin, Devontae smith Pelly, which is really, really cool. I really like to see that. It adds a whole new element. Initially, I kind of thought it would be overwhelming, but it is a very very, very cool touch. So look at our squad here. We got Max Pacioretty, 89 overall, easily going to be our offensive leader. He is an elite potential player, 89 overall. You got Thomas Pekanic, who is a exact top six. He's might not be in our pitcher for, he might not be in our long-term pitcher, but he's definitely nice to have. Alexander Semin right there, a, uh, a cool player because he has the puck skills. He has the shot. Uh, it's just his defense is not there at all. He's got the puck skills. Maybe he can can grow maybe a little bit to be 84, 85 overall. See, high locker room chemistry. He's a new player, so he doesn't have any locker room chemistry yet. Is that actually the case, or did I just make that up? I may have just made that up. Uh, contract info, Mora. Okay, so I just made that up, up apparently. Maybe no one likes Alexander Semin. Zach Cassian, obviously a, a brand new player, and he's got chemistry with Tokarski, De La Rose, and Petrie. But one more thing I want to add. When I was at the EA of Event, I asked the devs, I said, hey, for example, if I was to go to Vancouver and I was to trade for someone like uh, who played on, if I was to trade for Chris Higgins, would that make Zach Cassian's morale go up because they played together? And the answer is yes, which is very, very, very cool. So if I was to go get Chris Higgins, for example, Zach Cassian would love that. He knows Chris Higgins. They played together in Vancouver. Uh, so that's very, very, very cool. So right now, no one has any concerns obviously you can host player meetings all that stuff we'll get into all of it I just want to go over our squad here so I'm not too sure if Alexander Semin's gonna play on the first line might put Brendan Gallagher on the first line he's listed as a second line player but I know he can put up the numbers he's got the contract six years left with 3.75 which is a steal he's got good chemistry with Eller Galchenyuk and Dustin Tokarski uh, looks like Tokarski is more of a popular player but Zach Cassian a big talented right winger is going to play in his correct position. Uh, there he is, Zach Cassian. I loved him in Vancouver. I uh, just didn't work out. Hopefully, we can turn him into the player that Vancouver wanted. Uh, he's going to be a big piece of our team. David DeHarnay, again, kind of like Thomas Pekanic, where I'm not too sure if they're really going to be uh, you know, huge pieces of our future, but they are definitely good pieces to have right now. And Alex Gotchenyuk, 85 overall. He's definitely going to be playing playing on the second line. He's going to get the Zach Cassian and Alexander Semin line. That's actually a pretty good line. You got the power forward, the playmaker, and the sniper. That didn't work in NHL 15, but I am stoked to see how that's going to work. And we got a two-way forward, playmaker, and a power forward, which is kind of, he could be a sniper. He's a 40-goal guy. He could be a sniper slash power forward. And then you got 
Dale Weiss, the fan favorite. I would much prefer him as a fourth liner. Yeah, he's listed as a fourth liner. Uh, what are those arrows? See, I have no idea what those, what those arrows are. Uh, no one else has them. Everyone's got like that little, uh, I don't know what that means to be honest. Maybe I'll look that up or ask one of the guys, but um, that is very cool. Dale Weiss, great guy to have in the room. Everybody loves him. Uh, he's got the good morale. He's a good guy to have. David DeHarnay already went over him and Devontae Smith Pelly, top nine guy, third line checker. Maybe we can mold him into being like a second line, uh, a second line power forward. That'd be kind of cool. But Alex Galchenyuk, he's our high elite guy. He is our big ticket item. I'm stoked. Uh, he is going to be a huge, huge piece of our uh, of our franchise. And he's on the line with Zach Cassian, which is kind of nice. That makes him happy. And then you got Tori Mitchell, Lars Eller, and then Jacob De La Rose. So right away that makes me want to put Eller on the third line and put DeHarnay on the fourth because just overall wise and skill wise there's no doubt he's younger uh, he's a better player I think Lars Eller is a much better player than David DeHarnay absolutely so now who's he got good uh, good morale with Marco DeHarnay who we just switched him I'd eventually like to do something like this and then have DeHarnay there uh, but in a perfect world that's not really going to work so I'm going to let you guys discuss that in the comments. Uh, we're going to start the year with the team we have. We're not going to make any trades as of right now, but that's our offense. We'll have a look at our defense here, which obviously 91 overall. PK freaking Subban. This guy is an absolute beauty. Huge piece of our team. He's got the huge contract, $9 million for seven years. Uh, he's got good locker room chemistry with Carey Price. Uh, strange, though, no one else. I don't know how the whole thing works. Jeff Petrie, Alexi Emelin, Nathan Bilio. Bilyeu, I don't know how to, how to pronounce it. He's a beauty as well. Uh, he is going to be a big piece of our future. Uh, and then Alexi Emelin, Andre Markov, who's a little bit older, and then Tom Gilbert there to round out our defensive core. Obviously, the goaltenders carry freak in price the best goalie in the NHL hands down 6.5 for 3 years he's going to want he's going to want some big bucks after that he's he He's good with P.K. Subban, he's good with Petrie, he's good with Brendan Gallagher, he's good with Tokarski, Price is going to be awesome, and then Dustin Tokarski, he's a fringe starter, so I believe what that means is he can start games if you really need him. He's he's probably better suited as a backup, but if you need him to start two, you know, if you need him to start a game here and there, he is your dude. Uh, he is, uh, he's going to be, hopefully he can progress in maybe 84, 85 overall, be a really good backup for us, but that's that is your team with the Montreal Canadiens. Now we got prospects to look at here. We got a lot of stuff to go over. I may make this two videos depending on how long we got, but uh, roster moves. Okay, we'll have a look at the morale really quick here. Uh, everyone seems to be happy, which is nice. You get to look at the leaders on the team and Price and Brendan Gallagher actually. So that's that's very very cool. Galley is a leader. Where's PK? Is he not listed as a leader? I guess not. So maybe that can you know hinder our captaincy maybe we'll give the captaincy to somewhat of a leader obviously you can't give it to price so maybe give it to brendan gallagher something along that nature uh but what else can we do here we go to go ahead and look at the ahl here and we see we have jared Snorty listed as a top four so we should probably play him as a top four right uh we'll have a look at that i don't know if it's really going to be be an issue he's 23 he's 80 overall though he's going up he's got those he's got those little arrows i don't know what that means but uh he is a guy who we could definitely use but we still got a pretty good defensive core as it is uh michael Bornival there. Uh, Charles Hadon, which is going to be a good player for us. He's a high top six. He's very small, though, five foot eight. Uh, he is going to be really, really awesome for us. He's got the good skating category. A very one dimensional player, though. Uh, Dietz, all these guys, all these guys. Zach Facali, going to be another. He's a high elite. So he may be, he may challenge the next couple of years for a backup position. Uh, still very, very cool. So pretty much we have two GMs going on here. We really have to manage our AHL team as well. So things are going to have to be slowing rate down. Uh, what I want to do here is I want to check 
out who is our captain because I don't even know if the Habs have a captain. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they don't. Uh, Placanic, Patcher, Reddy, and Subban. Yes, they have three A's. They don't even have a captain, which is nice because we're not going to name one right now. Uh, what else can I show you guys here? We can show you the trading. We can actually show you guys the trade thing here. Uh, here is how it looks. All this good stuff. Obviously, our number one player, PK, Patch Ready, Galchenyuk. Three elite guys. De La Rose is actually elite as well, so that's really awesome. He's 80 overall. Uh, does it show where they're listed? Yeah, roll. So he's a depth player. He's not quite ready yet, but that's interesting. He's listed as elite potential. That's huge. Uh, Houdon as well listed pretty high. Noah Juleson. Brendan Gallagher's got pretty low trade value, which is kind of weird. Uh, Markov, all these guys. There you go. So we'll just have a look here. We'll go to we'll go to Buffalo really quickly. And Buffalo obviously has Jack Eichel, and he is right there. I made him 81 overall because McDavid's 83. I made him the exact same potential, so it's going to be the war there, whether uh, who is going to be the better player, McDavid, or is it going to be Jack Eichel? McDavid's got the higher overall. He's 83, I believe. Yeah, 83 with the medium high potential. All there. Uh, Edmonton obviously has a much better squad, but there's a quick look, and I don't think we're going to make any trades as of yet. We'll probably get the preseason done. Uh, what else can I do? I just want to get so many things done. I might just make this into one video, and then maybe get the preseason done. I'll show you guys how the uh, show you guys how the calendar works, show you guys how all that all that stuff works. So you can sim individual games. You can go simulate a preseason game, and then it'll give you these little updates here and, here and there or whatever. But uh, you can play the next preseason game, or you can can simulate it and we're gonna go ahead and simulate it here just to give you a little idea of how, how it looks this this year so there's a lot of things that are a lot different so obviously there we go just have a quick look you can intervene whenever you want obviously that's nothing new um, but we're gonna go to goals here and then you can just skip by using a it's not why this time you can skip periods by pressing a and we're down to nothing done and Taurus uh, three goals in the the, the second period Pass already Subban and Galchenyuk and then for the third period for playoffs and stuff you can slow the simulation down which is nice how do you start it oh resume x so yeah you can slow the simulation down you can improve it you can kind of do all that good stuff times eight it's a lot different though it goes by minute this time when you go times eight there you go there's a big goal Max Patcher ready uh it shows the power plays Kyle Turris just scored a power play goal on us I don't know if that was a power play goal actually does it like notify you if it's a power power play goal or not I have no idea but we're out shooting them 42 to 19 and we get the empty oh not even a, an empty netter Jacob De La Rose gets the goal there 5-3 you can check the three stars all of that good stuff Patches had a big game Pocanic had a huge game there you go so that's kind of uh, how the how the simulation works if you want to do it via the calendar you can just go here we're we'll just get the preseason done and then in the next episode we'll actually start the simulation itself so now we can get into some scouts maybe get into some some morale thing uh, we're gonna go into the uh, into the state so you can see the uh, assignment duration in the bottom right uh, the longer the scouting visits uh, it can increase the amount of attributes your staff uh, evaluates for all players in the region so pretty much the longer you go it's 15% of the whole year if you go for six weeks so we're gonna slow it down we're only gonna go for three weeks uh, yeah three weeks a month Five. You know what? We'll go 10% of the year. We'll go 10% in the uh, in the United States for forwards. And uh, Austin Matthews, obviously the number one guy there. I don't know if we're going to be involved with the Austin with the Austin Matthews sweepstakes. I hope not. But just kind of notably here, the simulation is wicked fast. It is very very quick. The whole preseason is done, just like that. Boom! Snap your fingers, and it is over with. We went six and one. Uh, the, the salary cap, all that good stuff. Yeah, that's totally fine so we have our first game against the Toronto Maple Leafs uh waivers all that good stuff we're gonna get some player morale stuff are we gonna see that here or you guys have to wait uh you guys might hi you guys are gonna have to wait we actually call we can actually call a team meeting right now a one player meeting of 
available. So you got to check out these things. Uh, they're going to pop up. We're going to go to edit line. Sorry, we're going to go to morale. And you can actually call a player meeting. Uh, Alexander Semen has something. Oh, this is this is very, very cool. So no one's getting along with Alexander Semen quite yet. I wish everyone in the locker room could just put aside their differences and focus on winning games. This is something I haven't really seen yet, which is very, very cool. I'm so excited for this. Uh, initially, I thought morale was kind of weird, and then I played two or three years with a offline GM mode, and I love it. It's so much fun. Like, like with stuff like this, it's just so cool. So no one is interested in playing with Alexander Salmon right now. So you can say, thanks for the input, but I'm happy with the group we have. I hear a lot of feedback like yours. I'm contemplating some changes, which we're not. Uh, we know about the problems, but I need you to be a part of the solution and not the problem. If you want change, become a role model in that locker room. You can lead by example. So any other player, if Brendan Gallagher was to come to me, I would say, you know what? We need you to be a part of the solution, not the problem. Don't be too hard on him, but since this is Alexander Semin, uh, the guy has somewhat not been a cancer in a locker room, but there has been talks that he's not a good guy to have in the room. So if you want change, become a role model in that locker room. You can lead by example, and it had a positive effect on him. So he's like, all right, you know what? Maybe, maybe I got to do something else. Maybe I I got it. Okay, so the morale, maybe that's it. Those little, uh, those little, uh, Maybe the morale, maybe like the happier the player are, the more stats, like the higher stats they'll have because he's got that green arrow now. So he's stoked on that. I actually can't call a player meeting quite yet, but uh, we're not going to give up on Alexander Semen yet. We're giving him top six minutes here. Uh, can I even call a player meeting? I don't think we can, but here are our lines going into the uh, going into year number one with the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, and here is how it's all look. I got a learn to speak French if I'm going to do a Montreal GM mode. I can't even speak English, let alone French. So uh, this is going to be quite an interesting experience. Uh, where is Alexander Semin? There he is. Uh, you got special teams. You got all this stuff. You got extras. Where is our defense? Can we do power play lines and stuff? Oh, special teams. Duh. There it is. So special teams. You can look there. Power play. Okay, so you got a bunch of options here. This is very, very cool. I initially didn't like the overlay or like the outlook of this, of how GM mode looked. But now that I got to play it, uh, it's very, very cool. We're going to have a lot of fun. we got to take things slow. We're not just going to rip through the entire thing. But we got game number one against the Toronto Maple Leafs. If there's anything that you want to see, please let me know. And I'll try my best to uh, I'll try my best to uh, to go to it. But we got our AHL squad here. We can actually have a look at our AHL squad. we got to assign our scout for the AHL as well. Okay, okay. So there's a lot of stuff that we have to do here. Here's, our, here's how our AHL team is looking. Uh, there you go real quickly there it is and then defensively uh, we have kind of a question mark what we're going to do with Jared Tenorti either play him or do we uh, play him or do we go and do we make a trade to, for him to be able to play uh, it's going to be kind of a question mark. But you can switch right here. Like HL, boom, NHL, just like that. So, so, so nice. So get rid of Tom Gilbert. That's going to free up some cap. Or we could have, or, I mean, and we could have like a really, really young five and six defenseman uh, with Nathan Beaulieu and Jared Tenorti. Going to be kind of up to you guys though. But I hope you guys are excited. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. If there's anything that you want to see, I can definitely uh, show you guys. But thanks for watching and I am very excited to see you guys in episode number two.